everyone. Today we're starting on a new topic, Hertz experiment and Planck's hypothesis. We'll be starting with the experiments of this fellow, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. His experiment was about radio waves. Now before we can get to Hertz, we'll have to start with Maxwell. James Clerk Maxwell was a physicist born in 1831. He's very famous for his work on electro and magnetic waves, and particularly the fields that are, are created by electrically charged objects and magnets, which we've studied a little of already. He's discovered the existence of fast-moving electromagnetic waves, an interesting phenomenon where electric fields produce magnetic fields, and they produce electric fields, and so on, and the whole thing sort of propagates through space. Um, he deduced that uh, light was a form of electromagnetic wave, because it moved at the same speed that these theoretical waves also moved at. So Maxwell's equations, as seen here, uh, imply that there should be a huge range of electromagnetic waves, not just light. Uh, all, electric all electromagnetic waves should be traveling at the same speed, because they're all produced by electric fields and magnetic fields. And they should have longer or shorter wavelengths than light. Um, now, here we have a number of electromagnetic waves. This is called the electromagnetic spectrum. So some other electromagnetic waves that we're familiar with are radio waves, down there, microwaves, uh, infrared light, which, is, which has a wavelength that's just shorter than that of visible light, or oh, just longer, rather. We have visible light, which we're all familiar with, ultraviolet light, which we know comes from the sun, x-rays, which are used in medicine, and gamma rays, which come from radioactive materials. Now Hertz's experiment, his Rudolf Hertz here, uh, was to try and provide support for Maxwell's ideas. At the time of Maxwell, no one knew of any other electromagnetic waves aside from light, so Hertz sort of went out to discover them. Uh, he set up an experiment to try and create radio waves. No one knew what radio waves were, but he was about to find out. Uh, this uh, provided the first experimental evidence uh, that electromagnetic waves other than light existed, therefore proving Maxwell's theory. Now Hertz used an induction coil, which we can see at the bottom here, to produce sparks in between the two terminals of a wire loop. Now the sparks produced electromagnetic waves, radio waves. We can see one of them traveling in the middle of this animation. Now when the electromagnetic waves reached um, this top bit here, which is simply a metal coil, not connected to any voltage source, they would cause sparks to jump across the gap. So here's what the experiment looked like in real life. We have the wire loop on the right and the induction coil sparks on the left. Now using this setup, Hertz was able to show that the uh, electromagnetic waves traveled in straight lines, which is good because it's like light. They could be reflected from a metal mirror, just like light can be reflected from a mirror. They could be polarized, just like light can be polarized, and he checks this by turning around the receiver, and it turns out that as long as it's lined up with the transmitter, the sparks are brightest. That shows that they travel in a particular direction, or they're polarized. They could be reflected, uh, refracted through a prism, which is an important property of waves, and it sort of proved that what it was looking at was, was a wave. Now, Hertz wanted to confirm that his radio waves were electromagnetic waves and not just some other sort of invisible wave. So he decided to measure the speed of the waves. And he figured that if they were moving at the right speed, he could prove that uh, they were electromagnetic waves. Um, so the experiment that he uh, conducted involved around two waves meeting each other. Now, an interesting thing happens when waves meet each other. I'm about to show you what it is. When two waves uh, combine with each other, they produce an interference pattern. And the interference pattern that uh, Hertz created by having two beams of radio waves, one going straight to the um, receiver and one bouncing off a metal thing, he was able to measure it by changing where the receiving coil was. Uh, now, once he was able to do that, he could measure the, the uh, interference pattern and calculate the speed of the wave. And he discovered that the radio waves must be moving at the exact same speed as light. And that was confirmation that the radio waves were in fact electromagnetic waves. This concludes the theory. Today we have learned about Maxwell's theories and Hertz's experiment uh, to prove them. Now let's go on to some questions. Question one. 
Which of the following statements about electromagnetic waves is wrong? Well, let's take a look at them. Uh, a. Visible light is a type of EM wave. We know already that uh, light was the first ever electromagnetic wave confirmed to be an electromagnetic wave, so A can't be the right answer. B. All electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. Maxwell's equations confirm that uh, all electromagnetic waves must travel at the same speed, and so this can't be the right answer either. C. There are many different types of EM wave. Well, we know a number of different electromagnetic waves, radio waves, visible light, x-rays, and so on, and so C can't be the right answer. Our last option is D. All electromagnetic waves have the same wavelength. And we know that this can't be right, because all the various different waves, you know, uh, x-rays, visible light, uh, they all have different wavelengths. And so this uh, is incorrect and is the right answer. Question two. Who proposed that electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light? Well, this is a bit of a history lesson. Uh, we know that Hertz was the one who investigated it, and he used the speed of his waves to confirm that it was light, so he wasn't the first one to propose it. Uh, Planck is responsible for quantum theory, which we'll learn about a little later, but he wasn't responsible for this either. Uh, Thompson was the guy who worked with cathode rays and electrons, and he confirmed that they weren't electromagnetic waves, uh, but it wasn't by proving that electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. And in fact, it was Maxwell and Maxwell's equations that proved that electromagnetic waves all travel at the speed of light. Question three. How did Hertz discover the speed of his radio waves? Well, we've learned that Hertz used a, pat um, a property of waves called the interference to deduce their speed. And by measuring the interference pattern, he could calculate the speed of the waves. Question four. How did Hertz produce his radio waves? Well, as we know, Hertz used an induction coil to produce a very high voltage that produced sparks between two metal terminals, and the sparks produced radio waves. Finally, question five. Name four types of electromagnetic wave. Now, there are a couple of these, so this is a fairly easy question. A few examples are radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and finally gamma rays. This concludes the questions. Uh, today we've covered the experiments that Heinrich Hertz pulled off to discover radio waves, as well as the predictions that Maxwell made that gave Hertz his motivation.